All right, I'd like to show you a fun little experiment you can do with your students when learning about the gas laws or maybe teaching the difference between ideal and real gases. I have a couple of balloons here. Behind the balloons I have a pan that's filled with liquid nitrogen. It's a metal pan and that's placed on a styrofoam block just to insulate the pan. It keeps the nitrogen in there a little longer. These balloons happen to be filled with different gases. This one's filled with air. This one's filled with helium. You want to disguise the fact that this is filled with helium from your students. If you fill this balloon such that it's pretty easy to palm with your hand, that'll, that'll make it so the density of the balloon is, is greater than that of air, so it won't rise. That helps disguise the fact that this balloon is filled with helium. Obviously, you fill it too much, it's going to rise, and students are going to know what's up. So first, I'm going to take this balloon that's filled with air, and I'm going to place that in the liquid nitrogen. And as we'd expect, as the temperature of the gas in the balloon goes down, the volume of the balloon goes down. Now I think it's instructive to use Charles's law to predict how much this balloon uh, would be expected to shrink if it behaved ideally. So if we start with a gas at room temperature that's 300 Kelvin, and it gets cooled to the temperature of liquid nitrogen, which is 77 Kelvin, of course if I don't get it, there we go, uh, you do a calculation and you'll find that the balloon should shrink to about roughly one-fourth of its original size. That's a lot smaller than one-fourth its original size. In fact, it's almost shrunk to zero volume is what it looks like to my eye. I mean, there's, there's almost looks like there's nothing pushing that balloon out whatsoever when it's in the nitrogen. It, it, it's shrunk flat. Of course, when I take the balloon out, it warms back up, the gas inside warms back up, and it expands back to its original volume. But what's going on when this balloon is placed in the, in the liquid nitrogen is air does not behave ideally at 77 Kelvin. Nitrogen gas and oxygen gas are going to start to display a large amount of intermolecular forces towards one another and that's going to cause the uh, gas to shrink to a much smaller volume than it would if those gas molecules showed no intermolecular attractions to one another. So it's pretty easy to see that air does not behave ideally at 77 Kelvin. It shrunk to much less than a quarter of its original volume. All right, now we're going to try the same trick with helium. And again, it's fun to disguise the fact that this is helium in this balloon from your students. And we'll try the same thing. I'm going to place this balloon into the liquid nitrogen. And I'm going to try the same thing here. I'm going to try to shrink this balloon in the liquid nitrogen. And initially, it looks like it's going to do the same thing. However, this balloon really resists my attempts to shrink it. And just to show you that I'm not cheating here, I really am trying to shrink this balloon, giving it my best effort. I'm going to go ahead and pour some liquid nitrogen on top of it, which really tends to shrink a balloon, really cools the gas inside very well. I'm going to pour the nitrogen on top, that's about as far as it's going to go. It won't shrink flat like the other balloon. It shrinks, of course, and it probably shrinks well within the prediction of Charles's law, but it doesn't shrink down to zero volume. That's because helium is going to behave ideally at 77 Kelvin. And that makes sense because helium doesn't liquefy till 4 Kelvin. Uh, at atmospheric pressure. And so helium uh, atoms, the helium particles inside this balloon, are basically going to display almost no intermolecular attractions to one another. And therefore, the gas inside this balloon is behaving just like that, like a gas. So helium behaves as an ideal gas at 77 Kelvin whereas air does not. 
Now one final experiment that you can do here. Ah, there we go. One final experiment you can do here is take a helium balloon that does float in air. And you can do this after you show to your students, or at least explain to them that there is a different gas in the two original different balloons. But what's fun to do here is to take a helium balloon that does float and take that and cool that balloon in liquid nitrogen. Try to really push it down in here. And this is uh, fun to show when you're showing the effect of temperature on the density of gases. So as I cool this balloon, the volume of the balloon is dropping which is going to affect the density of the balloon. As volume goes down, density goes up. And so this balloon, when cooled, should not float in air because the density of the gas has increased. But when I place that back on the table, it will rise. So we'll try that one more time. I'm going to cool this balloon in the liquid nitrogen. And I'm also going to pour some liquid nitrogen on top to really get this good and cold so that the balloon won't float and then we'll stick it on the desktop and watch what happens as it warms back to room temperature there we go pour the nitrogen on top we'll just let it set right there so it expands, its volume increases and at some point, there it goes.